Welcome back to the sound for more channel. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you to the sample generator inside Faceplant. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, let's click new to create a new preset. Then we click here to select the generator and we choose sampler. Okay, use your controls to activate or deactivate um, the generator here in terms of group, I should say, and then changing the group name and then here to activate and deactivate the uh, sample generator. Of course, you can click on the X to remove it and click on the X here to remove it completely. Let's select it again. As you can see here, uh, we have the uh, selection for looping and unison and also the envelope done here. So envelope works as always in the same way that the envelope works for other generators. Unison, the same. Um, although we have not covered it yet in the series of tutorials is coming next. Then in terms of the sample, the sample player, you have usual controls here for your uh, level, your pitching, semitone sense, your multipliers in terms of harmonic, and then your detuning, and then of course your phase, which again, same controls for the other generators, which we have already seen. However, this time we have a selection here for a sample. So you click on it and it will open this nice window, which you have different folders, including the user folders. And then you can choose between the different categories, some of the preset, some of the waveforms that, or samples that comes with Faceplant. Pressing the X to close that window, as you can see, you have a representation of the sample here, not just a waveform. You can see looping point, start looping point and looping point as well. Now, in terms of controls here, you can activate or the um, deactivate, sorry, activate and deactivate the looping. Yeah, like so. So when loop is not active, you don't see the looping start and end point. And therefore you have only just this view. By the way, it supports also drag and drop, so you can move up and down here in terms of the samples. And then you can also add the location here, click on other location, and then you choose a location I already added the desktop on my MacBook, where I can choose, for example, a drum loop like so, and I can load that. Importantly, you need to choose the uh, root node, which is a stub, which you will use to establish the uh, the fundamental in terms of what the sample responds to. So, and um, you can move it up and down. You can also do fine tuning adjustments here. And of course, when the, the lines um, align, it means that it is in tune. So if I go, for example, to a piano here, and I choose that, it says C2, if I start to move it, you see the two lines don't align, the line at the bottom here. And when they align, in this case of C2, you see, it becomes only one. It means it is for that root is in tune in terms of sample. Of course, here you have also access to a editor, a sample editor, which I will cover in another tutorial, but it's great to see that. So you can choose the root here and you can also um, lock the root node as you, uh, when load this sample, so you can do that. Same on the offset, so you can choose the starting offset of the sample. And of course you can lock it. Now, in terms of loop, when you activate it like so, and of course you can lock the and you can lock it as well as you move uh, within samples. Then here you can adjust the loop mode. The default one is infinite. So if I go high in pitch, you see it's looping within this region. If I let go, eventually. It always it always stop beyond this point. If I say sustain, you can see it becomes blue. This part is active. So if I give a little bit of a release, uh, 
a little bit more release. You see, eventually they will move beyond the looping point. Which, and that is your sustain mode, so it will sustain beyond the, the looping point. And then, of course, your ping pong, which will ping pong between the looping point. And you have your reverse mode, which will go in reverse in the, between the looping points. So you see it's moving in reverse here. Okay, so pay attention of the envelope. I had to adjust the release, increase it to show you that the difference between infinite and sustain mode. You can clearly see it because um, let's say that I load um, another uh, loop like so, right? And um, in this case, I don't have a looping mode, but of course you can define it here if you wish, like so, you drag and drop. You see infinite, it disabled this part here, so it will not sustain it. If you have sustain, it will sustain it. So if you have enough release here, in terms of length, the note after it will stop playing within the loops will continue and continue playing in this part of the sample. If it is infinite, they won't. Okay, so here you can adjust the start, like so. And also the length, like so. And also you can have crossfading, which is really useful to avoid some of the clicks. So let's say that uh, we go to some choir, why not? And you can see the crossfading here. So we can adjust it further. That, and also there at the end, of pr practically of the repeating loop and at the end of the sample to avoid the, um, clicking noise. As always, you can add the unison, which I will cover uh, very shortly in an upcoming tutorial. To make the sound richer, and of course you can add effects like a reverb. And of course now you can adjust it or incorporate it to other uh, generators which we have seen, already seen, like for example the analog one. That's why it becomes important to be able to adjust the level here. Nice, you can hear now that the sound is getting richer and richer. So you can load all your samples inside and of course you can play more than one sample player like so. This is the beauty of Faceplant of course, so you can come back inside here and uh, add other samples. So for example, uh, let's uh, adjust. For example, let's choose a different one, actually. This goes to lane number one. Let's activate the sample here. And of course, we need to ensure that you have a, a envelope that is white is not playing. Yeah, is very straightforward to actually create a problem like that. You see, it depends where I add it in. So in this case, I had to scroll down further to add it instead of just adding it in between there. So there you go. So although you could have done it like that, right? But you can see you added the sample only, not the envelopes. Okay, so just remember that as well. So in this case, I have both here. And now let's adjust, let's get so 
now you have the two sample player the first one on the top and the second one here and of course playing as you like <laughs> So the samples which are inside uh, Faceplant are really, really nice, actually. Anyway, so as you can see, you can combine multiple sample generators or sample generator you, with your analog generator, with your noise generator. And of course, you can create some fantastic sounds. I hope you enjoyed the short tutorial. And as always, see you next time. Bye.